In our tale, Jason, the protagonist, is a typical 18-year-old casually engaging in video chat with his friend, a person who facilitates his access to illicit substances. His friend inquires if Jason can receive a delivery at his house, and with adolescent nonchalance, Jason agrees. Meanwhile, we shift to Jason's father, John Matthews, a dedicated owner of a construction company. After a challenging workday, John Sachs rolls up his sleeves to assist Daniel, one of his employees, in loading Sachs into a car. Grateful for the assistance, Daniel and John collaborate to finish the job. Meanwhile, a messenger arrives at Jason's door, delivering a camera and a stash of drugs. Opening the package, Jason realizes he's fallen into a police trap. Fueled by fear, he makes a frantic run, pursued closely by the police, eventually leading to his capture. Meanwhile, John, away at a social gathering, receives a troubling call from his ex-wife, Sylvie Collins. She reveals uncomfortable news. Their son, Jason, has been arrested for drug trafficking. Rushing to the police station, John meets his lawyer, Jay Price, and his ex, Sylvie. Jay explains the situation. Jason was set up by a supposed friend in a sting to mitigate his own punishment. Now, Jason faces serious charges with potentially severe consequences. Facing ten years in prison, John desperately seeks a way out for his son, Jason. Convinced that making Jason act as bait to catch more significant players in the drug trade is the only solution, John grapples with guilt and fear for his son's life. In his efforts to persuade his attorney, Jay, John portrays Jason as a regular young man led astray by the wrong crowd. However, Jay bluntly presents the harsh reality. Jason's best chance at a lighter sentence lies in assisting the police in apprehending more drug dealers. Caught red-handed with a substantial amount of drugs, Jason faces an expedited trial date, with the condition that he remains in jail until then. In a meeting with John, Sylvie, and Jay, Jason is confronted with his options and pressured to cooperate in eliminating more drug dealers to reduce his prison sentence. Despite the plea, Jason insists he has no clueless about the major players in the drug trade. Jason is acquainted only with petty criminals who engage in it for fun. If he exposes them, he risks ruining their lives and his own. This dilemma leaves John more anxious, the tension wearing him down day by day. Leveraging his connections, John arranges meetings with the local U.S. attorney, Joanne Keegan, who is actively promoting her congressional candidacy by fighting drugs. Despite disclosing everything, including the specifics of his son's situation, John's sincere request is dismissed outright by Joanne. She contends that Jason was caught with a substantial stash. John, looking despondent, leaves her office and heads to the prison to see Jason. The sight of Jason's deteriorating physical state marked by cuts and bruises from a prison beating, sends a chill down John's spine. Jason breaks down into tears, recalling the early years spent with his father. Jason acknowledges the daunting challenge of surviving ten years in a harsh prison environment where beatings seem inevitable. John is devastated to witness his son in such a state. Troubled by the visit, John ventures into the city's drug underworld, dimly lit corners where deals unfold. He concocts a bold plan to identify dealers and hand them over to the police, but the dealers retaliate with a severe beating, foiling his intentions. The police intervene at the last minute. Joanne Keegan confronts John, aware of his reckless mission, making it clear that even if successful, it wouldn't have impacted Jason's case. Desperate for a way to reduce his son's sentence, John pleads with Joanne, who offers a glimmer of hope and reveals the only way to save his son. John faces a challenge as Joanne lays down the gauntlet, requiring him to identify her as a prominent drug dealer possessing at least one kilogram of the substance before considering Jason's release. Despite the difficulty of apprehending a major drug lord, John remains resolute. He suggests potential leads among his construction crew, a diverse mix of ex-convicts and recovering addicts. Reluctantly, Joanne agrees to reduce Jason's sentence if John can bring in a dealer, offering minimal assistance and leaving him to bear the full risk. Digging through staff files, John discovers Daniel James, with a history of drug use and two distribution charges. Currently striving for sobriety while caring for his family, Daniel becomes a key figure in John's risky plan as John encounters him at the end of the day. Offering Daniel a ride home, John diverts to a cafe where, over coffee, he broaches a delicate subject. Crafting a narrative about wanting to explore the drug trade, John requests Daniel's assistance in connecting him with a major dealer. Surprised by John's unexpected proposal, 
Daniel, who sees John as a sincere, hard-working man, firmly asserts his desire to distance himself from the drug world. Despite John's initial $5,000 offer, Daniel, having served two prison terms, longs for a fresh start and declines. John, raising the stakes, proposes $220,000 for a mere introduction, emphasizing it as a low-risk opportunity. Initially leaving, Daniel reconsiders when faced with the significant offer, his decision hanging in the balance. Considering a safer residence for his son, John unknowingly supports an informant, Daniel, who acts as a mediator between John and Malik, a formidable local drug lord with two strikes against him. Amid economic struggles and John's company barely making ends meet, Malik, willing to smuggle an extensive drug supply, hears John's proposal. John, presenting himself as a legitimate part of the company with a fleet of freight trucks, argues for avoiding suspicion. Malik agrees, on the condition that John and Daniel personally drive on the first run. Preparing for the operation, John and Agent Cooper install wiretaps to record illegal transactions. John and Daniel set out for El Paso, a short distance from the border, ready for an unremarkable journey with the covert aim of exposing illicit activities. Meeting at the junkyard, they face scrutiny about their smuggling strategy. As they disclose their plan to hide drugs in cement sacks to the drug dealers, the tranquil scene transforms into a battlefield. Ambushed by the rival gang, Bahan Nort, John and Daniel take cover amidst a hail of bullets. Spotting a potential escape route, they sprint back to their truck, with John skillfully accelerating away. Amidst the intense gunfight, they crash through the scrapyard, break the front gate, and collide with parked cars, one of which conceals an undercover police officer. Daringly escaping, John and Daniel navigate the chaos, driving off with their truck full of contraband against all odds. As Boar rises through cartel ranks, he eventually commends John's actions to Malik, leaving a lasting impression. Amidst the cartel, John's courage earns him increasing respect. Returning to John's factory late at night with the contraband safely acquired, they execute the mission under the cover of darkness. To dispel potential suspicions, they swap cars. In a tense moment, John excuses himself to the bathroom, but Daniel discovers him hunched over a phone in the office. Suspicion arises and Daniel confronts John, accusing him of betrayal. John, claiming innocence, insists he was calling his wife. Lacking proof, Daniel reluctantly releases John. Agent Cooper trailed them, strategically keeping a safe distance, attentively monitoring every move as they continued their journey. Upon reaching their destination, John handed over the package. As Malik engaged in the drug exchange under the watchful eye of Agent Cooper, he nonchalantly brought up an impending meeting with influential figures from the cartel. Seeing the chance for a more significant capture, Cooper refrains from arresting Malik immediately, keeping the transaction discreet. The following day, an infuriated John reminds Joanne Keegan of their agreement. Interceding, Cooper suggests the failed arrest may have aimed to apprehend more powerful cartel members. John, grappling with the situation, decides to visit his son Jason. At the workplace, he encounters his ex-wife, Sylvie, who reveals they won't see Jason for at least two days. He's in the infirmary with 36 stitches. Leaving the jail, an enraged Daniel confronts John, demanding to know his identity. Confronted, John discloses the truth to Daniel, who reacts with irrational anger. Daniel emphasizes the grave consequences. If the ruthless cartel discovers their betrayal, both they and their families would face immediate execution. Returning home, John finds his wife inconsolable, while Malik lounges indifferently by the swimming pool. Aware that the cartel seeks a meeting, Malik waits outside at the designated location. Anxious and alone, John enters, closely scrutinized by the cartel's intimidating security. Facing Juan Carlos Pintera, an air of danger pervades the room. Pintera calmly lays out a daunting task, transporting nearly $100 million of the cartel's drug earnings back to Mexico. Armed with this information, John promptly informs Keegan and Cooper about the plan. Keegan's response is evident as John eagerly anticipates the potential arrest of Pintera and the ensuing turmoil for the cartel. However, Cooper, always cautious, expresses concerns about John's safety, fearing the cartel's intention to eliminate him once he fulfills his purpose. Despite the risks, John insists on Jason's swift release after completing the assignment, a condition Keegan reluctantly accepts. John confides in Daniel, detailing the precarious situation they face. Collaboratively plotting their course, they devise a daring plan to escape both the oppressive government and the ruthless cartel. 
John executes a cunning maneuver, switching trucks and eluding Cooper's observation. At the cash pickup location, Cartel escorts Shadow's John, while Daniel undertakes his own perilous endeavor, breaking into Malik's house and confronting his guards. In the ensuing clash, Malik sustains severe injuries, and with death looming, he imparts crucial information to Daniel. The key is Pintera's cell phone number. Determined to alter their fates, John contacts Cooper, who swiftly tracks down Pintera's new phone. Armed with Pina's number, John now juggles handling the kingpin and the colossal drug hall with ease. The stakes escalate when the cartel discovers Jason's role as an informant, leading to a chaotic, secret imprisonment. In a high-stakes highway chase, John, gripping his shotgun, retaliates against assailants, enduring a leg wound. Struggling through agony, he spots another attacker's car, fires, and sends it careening off the highway, all while Cooper closes in on Pintera. During the DIA raid on Pena's home, they find it empty. Pintera has already fled. Cooper spots a passing vehicle and realizes Pintera is attempting to escape detection. Moving swiftly, Cooper's team encircles and blocks Pintera's vehicle, forcing the kingpin to surrender, especially with his young son in tow. Meanwhile, John remains pursued by cartel members, even after they shoot out his tires. Undeterred, John retaliates when a second attacker attempts to kill him, ramming his truck into the assailant's car, causing a massive explosion. Losing control, John's truck rolls, leaving him stunned and trapped. As someone approaches, John prepares for the worst, but to his relief, it's a DIA agent coming to his aid. As dawn breaks the day after Jason's release from prison, a sense of relief washes over them. John's family quickly enters the witness protection program, ensuring their safety. Yet Daniel takes a different route, refusing the offer and opting to go into hiding with his family on his own terms, marking the conclusion of their intense journey.